Hey, what's up everybody? Wheelie YouTube here, back with another video. So, as I said, I haven't made videos in a while. I made that comment in my last video, so I'm trying to get back into the swing of things, and we are going to be talking about the Elemental Dragons today. I've been running them on Dueling Network for about a month now, and I have to say they are, they are easily the most ridiculous dragon-based archetype that I've ever encountered in my entire life. Uh, they are extremely easy to use, so I expect you know a lot of noobs to be using these cards, depending on their rarity. Uh, hopefully they'll all be ultra so that nobody will be able to get their hands on them unless they are like semi-skilled and have actually a decent bit of money. Um, I actually am not one of those people, so I might be in a difficult position. I might have to end up selling my mermails. Oh my god! I know, yeah, it's crazy, right? Uh, and I would never do that. But uh, I might have to do it, because I know this deck is going to be awesome. But unfortunately, I also know it's going to be shut down by Evil Swarms, so we have to pay attention to that. So how does the deck work? Pretty much it revolves around four different elements, uh, obviously fire, wind, uh, water, and earth. And the idea is to pitch these little guys from your hand to special summon these guys from the deck. All of the elemental dragons are level 7. Uh, all of their attack points add up to 4600. That is a trivia question that you might come across, which is completely meaningless. Um, they can all be special summoned by banishing two dragon type monsters from your hand and or graveyard from the hand or the graveyard which means you can banish one from each to special summon them from the hand, one from each to special summon them from the graveyard, or two from either one to special summon them from either one. So that is pretty much what they do. Secondly, they all have individual effects whereby if you pitch them and one other fire type monster in your hand, you can do you know various effects. In the case of Blaster, the fire dragon, you get to destroy one card in the field. In the case of Tempest, particularly useful for Dragoonies, you get to add any dragon type monster from your deck to your hand, you know, like Red MD, Light and Darkness Dragon, for example. In the case of Redux, you get to special summon a monster from the graveyard, and in the case of Tidal, you get to send a monster from your deck to the graveyard. Um, unfortunately, these effects aren't particularly good. Why? Because you can only use one uh, effect of each of these monsters per turn, and only once that turn. Which means that if you special summon these monsters from your hand or the graveyard, since they are ruled the same as Mermaid of the Smegalo, High Priestess of Prophecy, and so many other cards nowadays, which in a way is kind of a way, uh, is a way to get around Thunder King Ryo. Um, they are treated as ignition effects, and for that reason, if you special summon them from the hand of the graveyard, that counts as their one effect for that turn. So what I'm asking you is this. If you have, for example, a burner and a dragon of fire and a blaster in your hand, uh, burner and all the little guys, by the way, before I say anything else, their effects are you can pitch them and another dragon to special summon one copy of, in the case of burner, you special summon a blaster, um, in the case of lightning, tempest, etc. Um, my question to you is this. If you have a burner and a blaster in your hand, would it not be far more beneficial to use burner's effect to ditch it and a blaster to special summon another blaster and then to banish two monsters to special summon the second blaster and overlay and stuff than it would be to ditch blaster and the burner wasting its effect to pop a card and then you wouldn't even be able to summon the blaster from the graveyard that turn because you've already used its effect. So it's like the amount of scenarios where I have the option to do both those things and I end up doing the former, I end up ditching the burner and the blaster, special summon the blaster from the deck, and then banishing two dragons to special summon another blaster. Um, the other thing worth noting, of course, is that if any of these dragons are banished, you get to search up any other dragon type monster of the attribute that was banished. So if blaster gets banished, you can search up any fire dragon type monster, tempest, wind, etc. Uh, that also counts as their one effect, of course, so if you haven't used that effect that turn, just make sure that you don't uh, end up summoning the monster and they were like, wait, you can't do that. So. The thing about the deck is that although it looks amazing for OTKing, it is actually not that amazing. Why? Because if you bring out the monsters from the deck uh, with the likes of Burner and Lightning, uh, they can't attack that turn. Uh, secondly, the monsters, if special summon at all, are returned to your hand during your opponent's next end phase. So either you have to overlay them into a rank 7, which is in, you know invariably going to be weaker than your two level 7 monsters on the field to begin with, or you're going to have to let them return to your hand and then pay their summoning costs once again in order to special summon them. So graveyard control is a very important aspect of this deck um, and with that in mind I would be very careful about what you banish uh, and what you keep in your graveyard. Um, so it's not kind of autopilot, I said that it's a bit easy to use but it's not actually that easy to use, it's relatively easy to use. Um, but it can be very e uh, easy for things to get out of hand uh, where you end up with a bunch of banished cards monsters in your hand that you think you can summon and then a couple of turns later you realize you actually can't summon them and you're left with basically nothing on the field. Um, in terms of field presence, the deck doesn't actually do a whole lot unless it's OTKing you. Um, special summoning all four dragons is not an entirely uncommon scenario, so you will actually see that quite often. Um, the specifics of my deck, it is pretty much a pure build of elemental dragons. 
Um, I run two copies of Debris Dragon because it can target uh, Lightning, Elemental Dragon, and Wind. And I get him to my hand often enough. Obviously, I don't search him up or anything. If I happen to draw him, it's fine. Um, and I draw into Debris Dragon, like, you know, mid to late game, which is fairly okay. Obviously, the one copy of Red Eyes Darkness Mail Dragon is a staple. Light and Darkness Dragon is amazing. He's just so, so good. If you get an Eclipse Wearing, an Eclipse Wivering, uh, any of these small dragons and any of the bigger dragons in your opening hand, it is a first turn Lion Darkness Dragon with a uh, Mecha Phantom Beast Dragon Sec on the field. Um, it is quite amazing, and I have never lost a duel when I've done that first turn on Dueling Ever. So, there you go. Uh, one copy of Necroface, I'm considering taking it out. I mean, it's good, don't get me wrong. But the thing is, whenever I put him in the deck, I always draw him in my opening hand. And I'm always like, that makes no sense. <laughs> that makes no sense. Uh, sorry, I'm quoting Anchorman, for anyone who's seen it. Uh, three copies of Gold Sarcophagus. Uh, Gold Sarcophagus is a plus one in this deck when you use it. That's why it's so awesome. Say you use Gold Sarcophagus on a blaster. Um, and then you search up a copy of Burner with Blaster's effect, and then you ditch the burner and something else, say a title for another blaster, then you banish uh, the burner and something else in your hand, say a Tempest for the title, and then you search with Tempest, and then it's just like crazy amounts of blessing. Uh, same thing goes for Seven Star Sword. Um, if you know one of your monsters is pretty much you know dead in the water, you have three level seven monsters in the field, for example, you only need to overlay two of them into a rank seven. Um, you've brought it out with the effect of a smaller monster, so it hasn't used its actual effect yet that turn. Use a 7-star sword of it, banish the monster, you get a search, and you get to draw two cards. Um, and perhaps one of the most ridiculous, stupid cards in this deck is Super Rejuvenation. Simply because if you draw it in your opening hand, the advantages are absolutely immeasurable. Particularly if you draw it with, like, four dragons and you pitch a bunch of them. You discard four, special summon two, overlay four, and rank seven. Uh, Drago Sack maybe, Detach, Special 2 Tokens. Um, obviously this deck doesn't have protection, so you pretty much end your turn right there, so then you activate Sewer Rejuvenation, and you draw 4 cards, and you pretty much get everything back. Also, if you happen to have Light and Darkness Dragon in your hand, um, you know, even better, because then you can tribute for Light and Darkness Dragon, and your opponent is in a horrible position, where you, um, you know, use your Sewer Rejuvenation, and since if you activate it beforehand, it resolves during the end phase, so Lion Darkness Dragon doesn't negate it, it only negates the original activation, which he won't be on the field for. So, yes, it's awesome. Um, the two Eclipse Wyverns, again, really, really important for uh, Red Ace Darkness Mile Dragon and Lion Darkness Dragon, respectively. Monster Reborn and Burial from a different dimension, simply because you want more ammo for your dragons. And also, Burial allows you to plus, because although it is a minus one on initial activation, if you return monsters uh, who, if banished, allow you to search, then you're not actually minusing off it. So... Pretty, pretty good. Really, really good. Um, as for the side deck, I haven't really thought about it that much. Um, I'm figuring people are going to side in the likes of Macrocosmos. Evil Swarms will actually be able to main deck Macrocosmos and will be this deck's worst matchup. So you can even look at stuff like Gen X Ally Duradark or um, just anti dark cards like Shadow Pressing Mirror and stuff like that. Um, it does actually affect Evil Swarm Ophion. His, his effect is continuous, so I don't actually even know why I said that. Uh, perhaps Skill Drain would be a particularly good side, in fact it would, because it doesn't really affect any of your monsters apart from Debris Dragon, and Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon, and Necroface. All the other effects activate in the graveyard or in the hand, so you pretty much wouldn't have a problem with that. Uh, one thing that people might side against you is of course Debunk, because all of your effects activate either in the hand or in the grave, and um, they're all treated as ignition effects. So if you banish two of your dragons for a cost, especially summon another dragon, and they activate Debunk, it banishes that dragon as well. And fair enough, you might get to plus off the at the effect when it's banished, but you basically lose your dragon for the, for the duration of the game, so that kind of annoys the deck to an extent. So I'd definitely try and pick up copies of Debunk. People are using it right now anyway, uh, against the likes of Hand Traps. Uh, your man who won YCS Austin, the Mono Mermaid player, he actually slided in two copies of these, uh, presumably against all that those annoying Hand Traps. Maxi is particularly annoying um, for him, because if he activates a bit Squall and they chain Maxi, then you know he special summons three of his monsters, they're all going to be destroyed, so he's more than likely going to have to overlay with them. And, you know, that means, you know, your opponent is going to plus one off it, and he doesn't want that to happen. So, yeah, get your hands on debunks. As for the extra deck, uh, one copy of Black Rose Dragon and two copies of Exploder Dragon Wing for the Synchros. It's because Debris Dragon is my only way to get into a Synchro. I can't Synchro with level 4 monsters. And, you know, there's really no other scenario in which I want to Synchro. Uh, Guy Dragon the Thunder Charger, Lava Ball Chain. The rank 4s are kind of pointless and meaningless because I very rarely normal summon any of the small guys 
I, I think I've only done it like twice uh, for some extra damage. Levier, the same same reason, you know, like two level three monsters doesn't happen particularly often. It would have to be a lightning and a burner. Uh, two mega phantom beast dragosac. This guy is going to be amazing. I think he's only going to be an ultra, and that's because the secrets are kind of being taken up by all this other shite. Uh, like more than likely, half of the TCG exclusives are going to be secret rare, and then you have the uh, seven star sword, which I guarantee you will be secret rare, um, because it just it's just so generic and, and good, you know. Um, so Mega Phantom Beast Dragosac, he's kind of the best first turn play you can go into, particularly, as I say, if you have Lion Darn Dragon in your hand, tribute the two tokens, etc. Otherwise, he's just really good protection, uh, you can sit on, it, sit on him for a while, tribute tokens, pop stuff, um, he's just a very controlling card overall. Can't be destroyed by battle or card effects while you control a token, which means that he, you, know, you pretty much protect him from Torrential, and indeed from Black Rose Dragon. I've done that before, where you have two tokens on the field, or even one token on the field. And then you summon your debris, you get your black rose, you blow it up. You're left with Mega Phantom Beast with one, ma uh, one material. You detach, you special summon two of your tokens. You've pretty much lost nothing. They've lost a their entire field, so it's a pretty good move. Uh, one of Iskaios, on those very rare occasions that I get two titles to the field, although it hasn't happened to me at all yet, actually, from all the deals I've had. Uh, three copies of Big Eye, because he's absolutely broken, and I really hope this guy gets a reprint. If he doesn't, I'm going to be pretty pissed, uh, because I'm finding it even difficult to get my hands on one of them even for a loan, like for a day for the Nationals. But um, yeah, so I really, really hope that this happens. Uh, Konami aren't stupid. You know, they know that the Spellbook Judgment Day thing is coming out for uh, High Priestess Prophecy and so forth. And they know that this deck is going to run Big Eye as well. So why the hell not re-release Big Eye? Everyone will be so much happier. It will make the game a lot better for everybody. Um, Leviathan Dragon, Utopia, and Queen Dragon Jin. As I said, rank 3s and rank 4s. You know, not that often. I might actually try and get my hands on 3 Mega Phantom Beast playing Drago Sex in real life when this deck actually comes out. But anyway, that is it for the deck. Um, it is kind of a turbo build-ish. Um, I'm more so, you know, just my objective is basically just to spam rank 7 XYZs as quickly as possible, to constantly put my opponent under pressure, to for bait out their bottomless trap holes and their deep prisons and stuff. I plus off their effects, so it doesn't really matter to me all that much. Um, and then basically the next turn I just swarm again, they keep swarming. And I found lately that a lot of people are just quitting when they know you're playing Elemental Dragons, which is stupid, you know, I want to test the deck. <laughs> but uh, let me know what you think of the deck. Obviously, it's good, um, because it's no matter what way you build it, it's going to be good. You just toss in three of every dragon, and it it just screams consistency. Um, and swarm ability, if that's even a word. And general craziness. So uh, anyway, that's it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be sure to comment, rate, and subscribe. And I will talk to you guys later. Peace out.